Welcome back. We're going to start chapter 7 today. And our first lesson is on the topic of what we call improper integrals. You might be thinking, we're doing integrals again? Uh-huh. So, what's the difference between all the other integrals we've done and these ones, which we call improper? Well, here's the difference. It says here that an integral that is called improper is one where one or both of the limits are infinite. So you'll see something like this. A number, then infinity, or both of them could be infinity. Or the function has an infinite discontinuity, which is a vertical asymptote at or between the limits. Okay? So Let's just look at the first four examples, and I want you to tell me why each of the following is improper. Is it because of the definition number one, one or both limits are infinite, or is it number two, there's a vertical asymptote at or between the limits? How about number one? Easy to spot, right? Because you see the infinite sign. So this has an infinite limit. I'll say one infinite limit. Two? Yeah, this one has both our infinite limits. How about number three? Notice that if I plug in one, one minus one is zero, square root of zero is zero, that's a problem. Can't really divide by zero, so therefore we have an infinite discontinuity because it's undefined at the limit of x equals to 1. So that's number 2. And number 4, if you think about plugging in negative 2 and 2, the limits are okay. But notice here, we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equal to negative 1, and therefore the problem here is that we have an undefined vertical asymptote at negative 1. It's in between the limits. So I'll say infinite discontinuity between this time, between the limits. Okay? Alright. Uh, let's look at the next few examples now. So now I want you to actually evaluate these improper integrals. Okay? And then it says, identify those which diverge. Now, if you don't know what this word diverge means, think. If you have divergent thinking, you are spreading things out really wide. Right? If you have convergent thinking, you're very narrow to the point. Well, same kind of idea here. If I'm looking at the integrals or the area underneath the curve, if the area diverges, that means the area must get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's just infinity. And I would say it converges to a number that would be something that would we consider as convergent, right? Opposite of diverging. So let's take a look at example number one and let's see how we can do this. Now, here's our problem, right? Our integral has a limit that's infinity. So to deal with this, you have to write this a special way, okay? I'm going to ask you to rewrite infinity using a variable, a dummy variable. You can use the letter b, c, whatever you want. I'm just going to use b. I'm going to also change 1 over x squared to x to the negative 2 dx. And what we want to say is that b is not really equal to infinity, because we really can't say something equals infinity. But we do want to say the limit of b approaches infinity. So that's how I'd ask you to rewrite all of these improper integrals. Now you do need proper notation. And then we'll continue doing the integral. So I'm going to keep the limit as b approach to infinity. We'll do the integral here. That's adding 1 to the exponent. That's negative 1. We'll divide by the new exponent of negative 1. And we're going to evaluate this at x equals to 1 to x equal to b. So we keep the limit still, right? We don't leave it, or we don't take it out until the end. So we have here negative 1 over b minus, I think that's just what? negative 1, okay, and of course that's just plus 1, so now we have the limit of b approach to infinity, negative 1 over b plus 1, 
Now we can put in infinity for us. 1 divided by infinity, of course, just gives you 0. So 0 plus 1 equals to 1. And so we now know that this gives you 1. Therefore, it converges to a number. It doesn't diverge. Okay. And notice the area is in blue here. Very narrow. This part gets small, small, small. Gets closer and closer and closer to 0. The area in blue is 1. Let's look at number 2. Here's the integral from 1 to infinity again. Okay, so let's just rewrite this as the limit b approach to infinity. Integral to 1 to that dummy variable b. And this is now 1 over x dx. And we all know the integral 1 over x is... <laughs> Did you say natural log? I hope you did, because that's what I said too. Be careful here, we put we should put an absolute value in front of the x, so the absolute value. We're going to evaluate this from 1 to b, so now we're going to just plug in those limits. Natural log of b minus the natural log of 1. We know the natural log of 1 is 0, so really, if I plug in b is natural log of infinity, well that's just equal to infinity. And because our answer is infinity, we'll say this diverges. So interestingly enough, 1 over x squared, not as steep as the previous one here, right? Very steep, not as steep. It turns out the area underneath the graph here actually is not a number, but it goes on forever and ever and ever. It's infinite. Crazy. All right, let's do the next one here. Numero trois. Same business now. We've got a problem with the infinity. So I'll ask us to rewrite it with our dummy variable. I like b once again. Integral from 0 to b cosine x dx. And you know the antiderivative or integral of cosine is? Uh huh. Sine. So that's sine x. We evaluate this from x equals 0 to x equal to b. We'll plug in now b for x. So you get sine of b minus sine of 0. I know what sine of 0 is. That's just 0. But what in the world is sine of infinity? Remember sine oscillates back and forth, back and forth between negative 1 and 1? So really, I can't tell you what it's equal to. And because I can't tell you what that is, guess what? This also diverges. Okay. No idea. All right. Two more for you to try. Same business. I don't think it's that difficult. I think you can actually try these. Because the setup is the same right as the previous ones notice for number four once again we have a limit that is infinite so we will just set it up using a dummy variable i'll use the letter b again and now you're just asked to do this the integral from one to b x times e to the a of x dx and if you can do this integral the rest i think is pretty straightforward so i'm going to get you to try both four and five and then I'll write down the answer for you afterwards. But I do want you to try it first. Okay? So be honest with yourself and your own learning. Pause the video now and come back when you're done. Ooh, if you thought 4 was difficult when you do the integral, then you need to do a review of Chapter 6. Two things multiplied together. I'm thinking integration by parts. Remember how u should be something easy to differentiate? Or you can remember Lippitt, logarithms, inverse, polynomials, exponentials, then trig. So in this case, the polynomial wins out. du, of course, just equals to dx. dv is now e to the x dx. So the integral of that just becomes negative e to the negative x. So therefore, this actually becomes the limit of b approach to infinity. Ultraviolet voodoo. 
So u v negative x e to the negative x. Sorry, I just put the negative in front of the x. Minus integration of v, which is negative e to the negative x, du, which is just dx. Whoa. And of course, we're evaluating this from 1 to b, right? The whole thing. So I'm going to put it out here, actually. Evaluating from 1 to b. Okay? It looks ugly, but we'll keep going. This is now negative x. I'm just going to write this as e to the x in the denominator. The 2 become a positive. So I'm really just asking you the integral of negative e to the x dx. I've done that already before, so I can do it again. Negative e to the power of negative x. Bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum. Plug it in, plug it in. Limit e approach to infinity. Now I'm going to plug in b first, right, for every single part for x. So that's negative b over e to the b minus e to the negative b. And then I'm going to subtract from it 1. So negative 1 over e to the power of 1 is just e minus e to the negative 1. That's 1 over e. And what happens here? Notice when I plug in infinity... This exponential dominates, right? The relative growth rate much bigger. So this whole thing becomes zero. And this just also becomes zero. So that whole first term is zero. And then you have here minus negative two over e. So negative two over e with a minus in front that becomes a positive. Did you get the answer of two over e? If you did, you are correct. Yay! All right, I ask you to also try five. Notice in this case, the both of those limits are fine. So why is this an improper integral? Note, you have a vertical asymptote at x equal to zero. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And so because of this, you will have to split up your integral into two separate pieces negative 1 to 0 of x to the negative 3 dx and adding to that 0 to 2 of the same negative 3x dx now notice in this case after splitting up the 0 is a limit that has a problem it's undefined there so now we have to use our dummy variable to help us out again let me introduce b and this time i don't want b to be infinity but I want b in this case to be 0 from the left to right, negative 1 to 0. It's from the left. Okay. So I'm asking you to do this integral now. And similarly for this one, it's now the limit of, i got to introduce a different variable. Do you want something else? Sure, let's use a, I heard someone say. 0 to the right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This time it's now a to the value of 2 x negative 3 dx so this is the proper notation you should have been using too okay so now we'll just evaluate both of these improper integrals separately and we'll combine them together to find our answer so we'll have the limit of b approach to 0 from the left the antiderivative here is x to the power of negative 2 divided by 2 so I'll just put a negative 1 half in front Okay, I'm going to evaluate this from negative 1 to b. Now the blue one still have the limit of a approach to 0 plus. Same antiderivative. I'm going to evaluate this one, however, from a to 2. And so now let's plug in the values. In this case, we'll plug in, actually we'll keep the limit first. We'll plug in now negative one half b to the negative two. I'm just going to write this as b squared in the denominator. Plugging in now negative one. So that's minus the negative. Negative one to the power of negative two is just one. So we're subtracting a half, which is adding a half. 
that's what we have for the first part the blue part now we'll do the same business of plugging things in plug in two two to the power of negative two that's one quarter times one half is negative one eighth then plug in the a so that's one half with an a squared in the bottom and now it's time for us to now evaluate notice in this case when I plug in zero zero squared is zero zero times two is zero one divided by zero is like infinity and over here same idea negative one eighth plus this thing called infinity 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 is infinity so if it's infinity you'll see that the function well not the function sorry the integral diverges okay so nothing really too difficult the notation is kind of funny here because we have to introduce this dummy variable but it's the proper way of doing things so you got it good now get to work when you get back to class i'm going to assign you a whole bunch of questions to try <laughs>